Think you've seen it all, huh? Think you know all there is to know about vault hunters, bandits, corporations, and nobody loser types? Well, you don't know Skag Diddly. Take Promethea, for example. A civilized place, as far as planetary-sized piles of excrement go. A planet still recovering from its war with the Malawan Corporation. The rival Atlas Corporation is in bad shape. Reese Strongfork, the big shot CEO with the regrettable mustache, is scrambling. He's on the cusp of something big. But he's not the only one. And into this pressure cooker steps... Dr. Anuradha Dar, genius inventor, socially awkward, uh, do-gooder type. She works for Atlas, been tinkering with a big, award-winning idea. Her brother, Octavio Wallace Dar, Meridian City's most well-known man, at least in his own mind, he's convinced his big break is just around the corner. And Fran Miskowitz, purveyor of Reese Strongfolk's favorite Froger flavor. She's hoping for a big insurance payout after that regrettable Malawan laser incident. So, you're probably asking yourself, what makes these three so special? And the answer is nothing. Yet. You're free now. Go! Go! Be free! Run! Oh, no. Run! Morning! What? Oh, I mean... Good morning. Seriously. Again? Yep. Another busy day. Work, work, work. Am I right? By channeling the Iridium's energy through a multiphasic refraction lens, I can reproduce the, as yet, inexplicable powers of the Sirens. Maybe not the wings thing, which is so cool, but, uh, crucially, the ability to manipulate an object safely through space-time. I'm Anu, the ultimate Siren fangirl, but for totally scientific reasons, I swear, and I'm so close to replicating the signature move of my all-time favorite siren, Lilith. R.I.P. Pong. <laughs> I was saying, in addition to forever altering the nature of conflict vis-a-vis -vis offering a non-lethal resolution, my device could also change the world. For the better. Imagine, a way for people to solve their problems without killing each other. I literally can't. I just have to figure out how to actually bring back the objects I phased away. And also, where they go. And also, what happens to them? Simple. Interdepartmental demonstration scheduled for two weeks from today. Dr. Anuradha Dar, signing off. Oh, snap. Two weeks? Really? It's going to be ready by then? You always seem so hesitant to put a timeline on this bad boy, so, you know, two weeks? Wow. Yeah, I'm sort of hoping setting the goal will force me to meet the goal, you know? Oh yeah, that's definitely how that works, so... All I've got to do is just figure out the next step. That's it. There's got to be something I'm missing. Figure it out with, like, your intuition or with your tech goggles? I would like to think both. Maybe start with the tech goggles, though. There's a button? On the side? 
Okay, goggles. Let's try a diagnostic. So, for starters, I should probably put an actual power source in there, huh? You needed the goggles for that. Now, where did I put that iridium ore? I remember you securing it a while ago. You said, I'll definitely remember where it is. <laughs> and would a clearer headed Anu remember the code to her safe for once? Better grab some money for lunch while I've got this bad boy unlocked. Did you say lunch? You buying? I don't know why I ever thought a Jabamin translator was a good idea. It worked, sure, but it turns out all they want to do is fornicate and fling feces. What a waste of time. It'd be great if you found that iridium shard because you're the only person who knows where it is. Were you seriously about to scam me without my consent? Not cool. I'm... We really need to work on your people skills, boss. If you want to know what's in my pocket, ask. Fong, can you tell me what's in your pocket? It's a Vaultlander figure. Some of the other lab assistants and I like to play before work. I totally creamed Roberts this morning, and this was my sweet reward. My trusty tools. So much potential for science in these simple implements. And what's that? Oh, Anu, really? Got you. <laughs> Left the rare and incredibly expensive ore inside the toolbox again, didn't you? Uh, maybe. I love that 
it hum. It's like it's singing. Like a siren song? It's the sound of a successful invention. One that finally gets us out of trouble with Reese Strongfork. One that changes the world. Just picture it, Fong. We are on the cusp of a world with less bloodshed. Where we use innovation and technology to help people and protect life, not casually destroy it as a matter, of course. Like, like, don't you know? I know, like profit-focused warmongers with no moral compass beyond the almighty dollar. Exactly. AKA Atlas's motto. <sighs> no cruelty, no killing, no compromise. You're a revolutionary boss. Ooh, who are we rising up against? <laughs> Not that kind of revolutionary, Timmy. Don't worry. I won't. Revolutions typically generate a 30% increase in market share. Good for business! In fact, the only thing better for business than revolutions are the vicious campaigns of suppression by the ruling elite that inexorably fall. Timmy, that's reprehensible. It is? Yes. I'm reprehensible? You are if profiting off suffering excites you. Oh. Uh, I'm learning so much today. Right. Anyway, are you here for something in particular, Timmy? Yes, please. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Strongfork to inquire why our company's test subjects are somehow... Liberated. I'm sorry. Test subjects? The Jabbers. Liberated. Correct. Your comprehension level is impeccable. You should have no trouble explaining why the Jabbers are loose. Again. They're currently running amok down the laboratory hallways. The janitorial staff is prepping for what I like to call... Go Jabber Grabber time. All right, it was me. You caught me. I did it. I let the jobbers go. Yes, we know. I apologize if my tone was misleadingly chipper instead of appropriately accusatory. Wait, what? If it's any consolation, the footage from this instant was captured at a much more flattering angle than the footage of you releasing the jabbers those other times. I made it very clear that I will not condone experimenting on live animals on this ship. It was in that memo she sent out. It was a mission statement. Well, now that we've got that straightened out. Ah, Dr. Dar, you have an update to your calendar incoming. It's an appointment with Mr. Strongfork. Oh, uh, I can check my schedule to see. The appointment is now. Oh, and, uh, what is it regarding? It's a reprimand session for Mr. Strongfork to reprimand you. Oh. Wait. Better not go empty-handed. Good luck. What's up, Octavio? Oh, Nestor! School's out already? Yeah! Hey, Papa Girardi! I can smell your space calzones from here! Ah, thanks! Uh, I, I need a new name for them! Might also need to stop doing that problematic accent! Yeah, I, I know. Miss Johnson, did you get a cybernetic leg? That thing's straight fire. Jesse, how's it hanging, dude? Oh, you know 
Oh, Octavio, it's a brand new day filled with endless possibilities and excitement. Sounds like it. You are good eggs, who it is? <laughs> Another new device? Come on, Octavio. It's ready done. But listen, I'm almost done with this demolition job. <laughs> Wanna head to Paco's for tacos? Ooh, do they come in my favorite flavor? Please don't say. Free! <laughs> You're such a mooch. I'll see you there. Octavia. God, jeez! I anticipated your arrival and have been waiting in a location that would not obstruct others. No, no, I, I wasn't scared. <laughs> like, at all. Your biometrics appear otherwise. Your voice resembles a nine-year-old girl's. Nine-year... <clears throat> Nine-year-old girls are the future, so thank you. I acquired the publication you requested. Come on! Your biometrics read extreme disappointment. It's Forge's super successful Dirty 30. It lists the planet's most promising, innovative entrepreneurs, and I'm not on it. Again! Have you accomplished some extraordinary business transaction to warrant your acknowledgement on this list? I survived Malawan's invasion. And I'd like to think that my social influence has kept this city together after the war left it in damn near ruins. No would have been a more succinct answer. Look, I'm working on it. Why? This list is merely the opinion of other humans. You should not value it. As a machine, I find this accolade pointless to strive for. Getting on Forge's super successful Dirty 30 is a lifelong dream. It's irrefutable proof to the rest of the world that Octavia Wallace Dar exists. That I'm a somebody. I know you're somebody. Yeah, but you're an assassination bot, which makes it weird. Perhaps you are disappointed. But look on the bright side. Many of these celebrated humans have contracts on their heads. Bivington Bradwick, for example, has numerous bounties on his life, but no assassination bot can kill him. He is rich and important enough that he never has to leave his home or do anything for himself. You, however, are not on this list. You're anonymous, unrecognized, a nobody. This is beneficial for your survival. But not beneficial for my image. I mean, all the best business people have probably at least killed someone to succeed. Something to warn a bounty, anyway. I'm doing whatever it takes to maintain appearances. Come on, if there was a list of all the best assassination bots, wouldn't you want to be on it? No. I pour my heart and soul, confide my lifelong ambition to be on this list, and you act all superior robot on me. But I am a superior robot. I have killed 963 people. You have killed no one. Don't diminish my potential. It's not that I couldn't kill. I could! If that's what it took. Despite your erratic behavior today, I am in need of your assistance. Sorry, I'm busy networking, innovating, shaking hands. After Malawan killed nearly half the merchants in the city, we've all needed to make new contacts. This would be an actual job, with money. Your various business concepts like financing, marketing, public appeal. Kidding! <laughs> I'm not busy. Totally pranked you. <laughs> You just got Octavio. Interesting phrasing. Perhaps I'll adopt that. Uh, well, that's kind of my thing, but... Now, on to business matters. You will aid me, as you have before, in confirming the names of my targets before I shoot two ion slugs into their brain. You know how to talk. You have a mouth. You will prove exceptional. Hell yeah. I love helping you with your work. Plus, I love money. We all love money. Whatever it takes to get my business off the ground. Do you actually have an idea for your business? Tons! 
once. A few. I'm working on it. Kissing rat's ass. Congratulations, Francine Miskowitz. It has been 90 days since your last uncontrolled outburst of rage. All right, all right. Let's make it to 91. Get to work. Take pride in your ability to maintain a positive attitude, even though a Malawan space laser decimated your Froger shop and subsequently reduced its Echo Net Yowl rating by 3.5 stars. Thank you, Sponsor Bot. Your Yowl rating is now negative 3.5 stars. Thank you, sponsor bot. As soon as the insurance money comes in, this place will look good as new. Warning, do not think about your malfunctioning TDR appliances, for which you still owe the TDR Corporation 600,000 galactic credits. Think about the fact that these machines are also licensed from Teteor and thus cannot be sold. As soon as the insurance fella approves my claim to fix this place up, I'll have Teteor paid back quicker than a chick chick reload. Some guns reload very slowly. Thanks for reaching out, sponsor bot. You're my rock. It's a bad metaphor. If you're going to do metaphors, be better at them. Oh, connection's gone squirrely. Can't hear you. Talk later. Everything is going to be just fine. My new slaughter omatic combat vegetable knife slices artichokes as easily as arteries. <clears throat> We're not open yet. And lore. How's business treating you, handsome? Not bad. If there's two things you can count on Prometheans buying, it's bullets and brew. Place looks as charming as ever. I thought the insurance money was supposed to come through by now. Claims guys coming by today, they've been jerking me around, saying I have to pass some sort of final interview to get my cash. How dare they not trust a kind old lady like you? Want me to shoot them? It's been a while since I shot anyone. A week, at least. Still, I'm a steady trigger, so long as I've got some caffeine in me. I'll have you know I'm in my prime. Physically, financially. Sexually. Hey, could you add some poison to this real quick? <laughs> He's blushing. Didn't figure you for such a prude. Oh, shut up and drink your coffee, you old pervert. Thanks for this, by the by. Samesies. Uh-oh. Looks like the morning rush has arrived. I'm outy. All right, all right, all right. Time to make the Frogerts. Good morning. Welcome to Franz Frogerts. What can I get you today, hon? A large peanutty buddy with sprinkles.
Here you go, sweetheart. Whoa, this looks incredible, Fran. I know, babe. inform him of your presence. Just apologize for the jobbers. Won't happen again, sir. You cannot lose this job. My idea is a paradigm shift. One that could help Atlas beat the competition. Yeah, that sounds great. Convincing. Job saving. Right? Timmy, tell Dr. Dar I'll see her now. Dr. Dar? Hello, sir. Uh, Mr. Strongfork. Uh, is everything all right? Because I can come back if... No, no, no. Everything's fine. It's fine. I just got outbid again on an ultra-rare Zero Voltlanders figurine. Again. It's an investment, you know, you know, you know what, forget it, n never mind, just, just, come on in, have a seat. Thanks for coming up on such short notice, but I figured I ought to just set a meeting as quickly as possible so we could touch base on the issue of you keep releasing jabbers on the ship, again! You've got to stop doing that. And also, we're in space. We're all contained animals up here, Dr. Dar. Honestly, sir? I think this has all just been one big misunderstanding. Oh, yeah? Crazy. <laughs> Let's just get this all sorted out then. So silly of me. <laughs> Yikes. Did you not release a lab full of jabbers? Again? No. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. Yeah, you did. You cost me a fortune. Do you have any idea? Any? I have guys in R&D working on cold fusion powered giant robots who spend less money than you've wasted on freeing animals from their cages. And iridium ore. Oh my god, the iridium ore. If I'd seen any evidence at all, a shred of it, that you had been using that iridium ore to make something that, you know, we could sell or patent or eat, I wouldn't care, but... Now that... There's a pretty interesting little gun there, huh? Look at it all gun-shaped. This is no gun, Mr. Strongfork. This is my... device. Okay. This device. Gun. This device is going to achieve something no one ever has. Something no one has come close to. Replicating the powers of a siren with the pull of a trigger. Now that's a pitch. Keep going, keep going. I'm serious. This is exciting. The Cold Fusion robot guys, they give a fun presentation, but it's always, you know, a little, a little much. With power like this, we can save the world. Which one? All of them. Now that's a lot of markets to have shares of. Okay, decent pitch. I give it a C minus. Enough to not get you fired, yet. So, I'm gonna need a demonstration to see what this adorable little game-changer of yours can do. Absolutely, sir. If you have space in your schedule in two weeks' time... Now? I meant now. There's no time like the present, right? So, present! But I haven't... It hasn't... It's in progress, and... It doesn't do anything, does it? No, no, it, it does. Just 
Let me explain. Oh, by all means. And by all means, I mean this had better be really, really good, or you're fired. It's an energy manipulator, designed to move any tangible subject through space-time. Move through? Transport, yes. It's a phase-walk gun? It's a phase-walk device. A phaser. A phaser. A totally non-lethal, utterly decisive way to end any conflict. Wait. Non? Lethal? Yes. So, to clarify, you have spent all the money and resources at your disposal that I gave you, from my disposal, to build a gun that does not kill people? I've built a device. Gun. Device that doesn't kill. It just sends people on a little vacation. A vacation to death? No, just a vacation. They literally vacate. Our customers don't want to send people on vacation. They want to send them to death. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know what? Show me. Show me or put it on the desk and leave my office. Okay. I, uh, I think you're really going to like this, sir. I am waiting to be deeply, deeply impressed. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god! Right? That wasn't the blast, dummy! It was my... It was on display! I can't... Oh, oh my god. Oh. oh. Okay, okay, okay. Impressive. It's very impressive. Now, you know, reverse phase. <laughs> Unzap. De-eliminate. Bring it back. There's no reverse switch, sir. It only does the one thing, so far. It's a prototype. Well, where the hell did it send my stuff? I, uh, do not know. <laughs> so it's just... gone? Gone forever. Like so many fabric scraps in the wind. Coasting through the ether. I'll never see that tie again. I could get you some electrical things, sir. It won't be the same. Ah! Mr. Strongbark! CEO of the Atlas Company. I am your assistant. Uh, yeah, Timmy, I know. Then now is my time to shine! Let me assist you. Wait, wait, wait. Timmy, what? I will go on a quest to retrieve what you have lost. A uh? rescue mission! You would do that? For me? Of course I would. Mr. Strongfork! CEO of the Atlas Company. Doing anything and everything for you is literally the purpose of my existence. Yikes. Yeah, well, that's a fair point, actually. All right. Dr. Dar, let's try this again. On Timmy. Timmy? Timmy! If he doesn't come back, you'll be hearing from me. Specifically the sound of my tears. He'll definitely come back. I think. Someday. Can I just say, for a gun... Device. ...that's designed to be non-lethal, that thing is really doing some damage. Thank... you? Not a compliment. You can't control it. You barely know what it does, except that it doesn't kill things, which makes it useless. It isn't designed to kill. Not everything needs to harm people. I feel harmed. I feel very personally harmed. Just not in a way that's profitable. Oh my god, why? Oh, Timmy, where are you when I need you most? <sighs> You've reached Reese Strongfork, the CEO of Atlas Corporation. Well, well. If it isn't Reese Strongfork. <laughs> Susan Coldwell, 
CEO of TDR. Why? Why are you calling me? You know what? Can you hold on for just a sec? Dr. Dar, you may go. And if it wasn't clear already, uh, you're fired. But, sir... Susan, how'd they hang in? <laughs> Perky as ever, Reese. And you? Eyes and limbs all accounted for? Oh, yep. All good over here. Doing just great. Better than. Was there, uh, something you needed? You know the drill. I can't kill my target until they say their full name out loud and I'm able to confirm its match against the name in the database. That's where you come in. So you must get my target to say their full name out loud. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. The same my first rodeo. What is a rodeo? Oh, it's when, like, ranchers ride bucking. You know what? Never mind. Very well. What did they do, whoever you're about to kill? A man named Jamison Harwin kicked his neighbor's pet scat pup. So the neighbor contracted me to punish him. Well, I mean, did the skag do something to deserve getting kicked? Blaming the victim, Octavia. For shame. For shame. It's not that. Maybe it was self-defense. I said, for shame. Do you have any further questions before we begin the operation? It shouldn't take long. Yeah, just one. What's your favorite flower? Posies. Posies? Posies. A single posy is worthless, but they're delightful in a bunch. Posies? Posies. Jamison Harwin lives in that apartment complex. You will use the buzzer for apartment three to get him to come outside. I will be waiting nearby, with death. All right. I guess he deserves it. Let's go. Pizza here for apartment three? What? I didn't order any pizza. No offense, but are you by any chance drunk, sir? W well, yeah. How the hell is that relevant? Drunk folk order pizza, then forget about it. Happens all the time. Think of me as a present from your past self. All right. I'll be down. Just give me a sec. Well, I must admit, your methods are strange. It seems to have worked. Now you must get him to say his full name before I can fulfill the contract. No problem. Give me here, kid. What gives? I come all the way down here and you don't even got it? You better not be messing with me, boy. I got a hell of a temper. Sir, I'm so sorry. Someone just ran by and stole it right out of my hands. Can I confirm your full name so I can make sure you get a replacement? I was really looking forward to that unexpected pizza, and now I really want it. My name's Jamison Harwin, and I want to talk to your manager. You just got L0U13. Did I do it right? Nailed it. Jameson Harwin, we hardly knew you, but you did seem like a real bastard. Well done. I have received payment. Here is your commission, friend Octavio. Ooh, cash money. Make it rain!
I'm meeting the crew Apocalypse. You in? I am indeed in. Though I still cannot fathom how you can eat food from a man who lives in the sewers and befriends Ratch. I use a lot of hot sauce? And that's how Papa Gerardi makes a space calzone. Fascinating. I have an additional inquiry. You mentioned your past proclivity for stealing. As you know, many of my contracts have been for idiot petty thieves, such as yourself. Now, your sister. Anu. Your sister Anu disapproves of this proclivity and wishes for you to stop stealing. Are you heeding her counsel? It is a dangerous hobby, Larceny. I've stopped stealing, but not because of Anu. I'm going legit. It's the only way to earn respect as a business play, homie. Logic error. 100% of business players are not legit, homie. Oh, Octavio. Hi. Louis, let me introduce you to Diamond Danielle. A real thief and definitely not an idiot. That's one way to introduce a friend. Sure. Greetings. Diamond Danielle must be a moniker. Since it obscures your real name, I have a 0% probability of killing you. Are you flirting with me, robot? No. Real charmer. He's working on his people skills. I am not. We're on our way to Pacos to meet up with Radon. Wanna come? Tacos. I'm there. You are not. We must ambulate there. Ignore him. How many times do I have to tell you to sweep behind the counter, Octavio? Killing me. Help you out in a sec. You want to help me? You'll give me what I asked for, and you know damn well what that is. Henry? Hank! What brings you around these parts? Same as always. You owe me for protection, and my price ain't budging. You know, usually a protection shakedown involves actually protecting a place. Didn't see you anywhere when Malawan was blasting holes in my store. Don't blame me for the whims of our corporate overlords. There's only one thing I want. And it's time to pay up. Ugh, I'm sorry, but there's no way I can give you a lifetime of free Frogert, Hank. Not at the rate you eat it. Why? Huh? Do it! Hey, do it, or I'm gonna kill you! That's how it's gonna be? I tried to be patient. But you feed me enough frozen yogurt to keep me on a 24-7 sugar high, or I feed you the tip of this pick! I'm through asking. You're gonna give me what I want, or we're gonna have a dozen flavors worth of problem. You keep threatening me, and you're not gonna like where this conversation ends up. Mmm, sounds like somebody fell off the anger wagon. 90 days clean. You play your cards right, and we both might live to see 91! No, maybe... Maybe I just kill you and take this place over for myself. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And frankly, what'd be the difference? Huh, whether it be an ice pick to the eye or slowly wasting away in debt to the TDR Corporation, you are dead. Either way. Face it, Fran. You failed. Maybe you could have been somebody once upon a time, but that was a good 10,000 Frogerts and a Malawan laser ago. You have got nothing. No. I'm sorry, that was too generous. You are nothing. Here goes nothing. Get the hell out of my shop. Oh, she 
she's angry. It's been years since I fought a geriatric. <laughs> Words. Order up. Oh, jeez! Oh, oh, no! Is that blood? Am I bleeding? I tried to be nice, but this time you've gone too far. Now, you just stay here, and you think about your behavior. Me. <laughs> Here's hoping for a hundred, eh? Or I'll break you into cubes and serve you in lemonade. Coming, dear! What am I gonna do now? Where am I gonna go? I mean, we're in space. I live here. Octavio gonna say the way we left things <sighs> I know this can work I just need more time and someone with enough vision to see its potential <gasps> oh hey Anu no big deal or anything but can you come back to the lab real quick like really really quick like before you get killed killed <laughs> That's a little dramatic, Fong. I got fired. It's a setback, sure, but not a death sentence. What? You got fired? Yikes and a half. That sucks. Wait, does that mean I'm fired too? You know what? Forget it. Not even on my list of things to stress about right now. We are in the middle of a TDR invasion. With dudes in body armor and guns of an admittedly lower quality than Atlas's. The whole shebang. So, let's go. Could you... Repeat that. The sound of being fired is still ringing in my ears. It almost sounded like we're in the middle of an invasion. Yeah, so remember when Malawan tried to stage a hostile force takeover of Atlas back on Promethea? Of course, I'm from Promethea. It was devastating for Atlas, and they blew up Strong Fork's favorite Frogurt place or something. No, yeah, actually, my brother works there. Well, I guess TDR smelt blood in the water and decided it's their turn to take a stab at Atlas because they are a hundo P boarding this facility right now and it is hostile. Like very, very hostile. How do you know all this? Oh. Employees of Atlas, let's all give our surprise guests from TDR a warm welcome and show them what makes Atlas the company it is. And by warm welcome, I of course mean show them everything we've been working on lately at close range. Let's be elsewhere fast. <laughs> you felt weird. Oh, crap. Hide, hide, hide. If you were keeping an active vault key somewhere on your space station, where would you hide it? Boss lady said it's in his office, so that's where we're going. I just don't underestimate this guy. All right? Affirmative. I heard he ripped his own eyeball out. It's kind of crazy you don't mess with. Gentlemen, lovely to see you. I'd offer you a beverage, but my assistant Timmy was recently teleported to God knows where. Reese Strongford. We are here for the vault key and or your bloodied corpse. Hey, fellas, come on. Come in. Have a seat. Say, would either of you be interested in a career change? We've got some killer benefits. 
Gotta get a cocktail. Fired during a hostile takeover? Yeesh! Bet you can kiss your severance package goodbye. Oh no, I've got the right here. That door wasn't broken the last time I came through it. That's the thing about hostile takeovers. They're hostile. It smell like guilt and shame. Can you mommy bring a pack lunch? Resistance is highly frowned upon. I'm frowning! <laughs> We're frowning. Looks like we're not the only ones being invaded. They're headed down to Promethea, too. Didn't you say your brother was down there? He's a survivor, right? I'm sure he'll be okay. Octavio. Uh, uh, yeah, he, um, he's. I mean, you both came out of that Malawan ordeal okay, yeah? He's caring, but also careless, if that makes sense. I think I follow. He's young enough to think he can do anything, and old enough to get into a lot of serious trouble because of it. I have to get down there and find him. He needs me. Well, hear me out. Maybe you let your brother save his own life while you save yours. You don't have a brother, do you? Only child. But I always imagine it'd be like having a pet, but dirtier? There isn't a life for me with Atlas. And there isn't a life worth living if it doesn't include Octavio in it. So I'm getting off of this tin can, one way or another. Well, there's only one way. And it's with a launch pod. Follow me. Hope your health is entry wound. You'd find out if you could land a hit. I'm trying. Don't be mean. Halt! Halt! Covering fire! get into a launch pod without being noticed by asking me to cause one hell of a distraction you'd do that for me sure you may not have noticed with your head buried in your research but we're friends this is what friends do and besides causing a scene that's something at which i excel Fong, thank you yeah don't mention it seriously i have a reputation to uphold You be careful out there, all right? You too, please. Oh, and hey, take this from me. I don't want these TDR bastards getting their hands on my lucky vault lander. It'll be safer with you. Is this you? Yeah, I won it in a stupid contest or whatever. No big deal. It's just like the only one in existence. Super rare and wasted on someone who doesn't play. But whatever, just get out of here before I change my mind. Fong. Thanks again. Right. So, I'm headed back that way. You go this way. There's a launch pod ahead. Make sure you get yourself in it. Hey, Tidior! I hear you're looking for a vault key. I know exactly where Strongfort put it. Oh, quick question, though. Are any of you allergic to jabbers? I'm sorry, I'm about to profit off your violent end.
Hold on, Octavio. I'm coming. I find eating to be both barbarous and disgusting. I will wait there and dispense expired motor fluids. I'm gonna go talk to Radon. Haven't seen that crazy son of a bitch in a while. Are you playing one of those insipid interactive narrative video games? No, this is my Echodex 4520, Parabolic Homing Origin Netwave Emitter, also known as Pahone. What does a Pahone do? Everything! It's so much better than the standard Echodex. I can communicate with my pals, take and scan images, play executable programs, watch the big game. What is the big game? Which everyone is on. Anyway, the best thing about this baby is I had a jailbroken. Forget about your standard Econet. I'm coasting through the shadows. With these black market executables, I can gather all kinds of information about people without them noticing. Who is them? You know, corporations, man. Gatekeepers, suits, the squares. Those chumps can't box me in. I'm a disruptive entrepreneur. I use every competitive edge I can get. Sounds complicated. I prefer the simple life of learning someone's name and then murdering them. If you're to have me socialize here, I suggest you do me a simple courtesy. Perform secret background bounty checks on all your friends, so I don't reflexively fire two ion slugs into their brains. Even Diamond Danielle might have aliases with bounties. It's still the same brain when I fire slugs into it. <laughs> 